Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part two for the chemical bonding series. Uh, in this video, we'll focus on ionic bonding. So by the end of this uh, discussion, you should be able to describe how ionic bonds are formed using examples, uh, define ionic bonds and represent ionic compounds using uh, the Lewis structure or using the Lewis dot structure. So to help us define ionic bonding or describe ionic bonding, let's use sodium fluoride. Okay, let's use sodium fluoride. So let's begin by writing sodium and fluorine differently. We have sodium and we have fluorine. Sodium has 11 electrons and fluorine has 9 electrons. So the electron configuration for sodium will be 2, 8, 1. For fluorine, it will be 2, 7. Okay, so this is sodium. Sodium has three shells. And then this is fluorine. Fluorine has two shells. Sodium has two electrons in its first shell. Two, and then eight in the second shell. And then one in the last shell. Fluorine will have, uh, let me use another marker for fluorine. We'll have two electrons in its, sh in its first shell and seven electrons in its uh, second shell. So this is fluorine. So uh, to, in order to obey the octet rule or to become stable, sodium uh, will need to lose one electron. We'll need to lose one electron to fluorine and fluorine will need to gain one electron. So let's try to rewrite this. Sodium has already lost one electron, so the last shell will not be here anymore. So this is sodium, and then this is fluorine. Sodium had two electrons here and eight electrons here. Now, as you can see, sodium has lost one electron. How do we represent that? We assign a positive charge because it has lost one electron, okay? And then for fluorine, we had uh, two electrons in the first shell and seven electrons in the second shell. But we have added one electron from sodium. It represents that by uh, X. Now fluorine will attain a negative charge because it has accepted one electron. Okay, this can be represented as this can be represented as sodium plus and fluoride minus. This is again the same as sodium fluoride. Okay, so uh, we said in our in our previous video that ionic bonding is formed by complete transfer of electrons. So sodium has lost one electron and fluorine has gained one electron. So losing electron for sodium will make it a positive charge. How? That's a good question. Sodium originally had 18 protons and 18 electrons. So the sum of this will be zero. That is why there is no charge for sodium here, okay? But sodium, after losing uh, one electron, it will have 11 protons again, but 10 electrons. So the sum of this would be positive one, which will make sodium a positively charged ion here. For fluorine, we had nine protons and nine electrons. That is why the charge was zero here. But now, after gaining one electron, fluorine will have nine protons and ten electrons. So nine minus ten is negative one. That is why fluorine has negative one charge here. This is how ionic bond is formed. Now let's define ionic bond using our structure here. So as you can see, sodium is a positively charged ion now, and fluorine is negatively charged ion now. So there will be an electrostatic force of attraction between. This, uh, you guys remember this uh, from your physics class, the fact that uh, opposite charges attract each other, that works here, okay? Sodium, a positively charged ion, and fluoride, a negatively charged ion, will be attracting each other. This attraction is known as ionic bonding. Now let's look at uh, these three uh, examples of writing the structure of ionic compounds, okay? We have potassium oxides, aluminum, Aluminum uh, nitride, 
we have aluminum nitrite and aluminum oxide. So uh, first, let's try it, or let's uh, try to write their formula. So in potassium oxide, we have potassium and we have oxygen. So we know that potassium is group one metal, meaning it has one electron in its last shell. So potassium has an ion of positive one charge, and oxygen has an ion of minus two charge. Okay, so crisscrossing this will give us K2O. So one formula unit of potassium oxide has two potassiums and one oxygen, okay? So don't forget that uh, when writing Lewis structures, we only consider the outermost chain, okay? So potassium ion, originally potassium has configuration of two, eight, eight, one, but in potassium ion, it has already lost this electron, meaning the last shell will have zero electrons, okay? So potassium will have no electrons in its last shell. This represents the last shell. Why? Because it has lost how many electrons? One electron. How many potassiums do we have? Two potassiums. This will be plus one again. So this uh, two potassiums has lost one electron each, totally two electrons. That is why we have uh, two potassium ions with plus one charge. And uh, one oxygen atom will need to gain two electrons to become stable. So oxygen originally, this is oxygen has originally two six configuration, but after gaining two electrons, it will have two eight configuration, okay? So our oxygen will look like one, two, three, four, five, six. It had originally six electrons, but now it has gained two electrons, making uh, oxygen two minus charged. So this is how we represent potassium oxide. Now let's move to uh, aluminum nitride. Aluminum nitride. So first, let's try to remember what ions we have here. Here we have aluminum ion and here we have nitride ion. So in aluminum ion and nitride ion. So aluminum has electron configuration of two, a three, meaning it, it needs to lose three electrons to become stable. That is why aluminum will have plus three charges. And nitrogen has electron configuration of two, five, meaning it needs three electrons to become stable. So the charge on the ion of nitrogen will be minus three. So crisscrossing this will give us Al3 and 3. But formula of ionic compounds should be uh, put in a smallest possible ratio. So this will be cancelled by this. Now aluminum ion, I mean aluminum nitride would be L AlN. Okay. Now let's write the Lewis structure for this. So we have one one formula unit of aluminum nitrides has one, other, uh, one ion of aluminum and one ion of nitrogen. So aluminum, in its last shell, it won't have any electron because it has lost three electrons already. So this is going to be aluminum plus three charged. And nitrogen has gained three electrons, okay? Three electrons. So originally it had one, two, three, four, five electrons, five electrons, but after gaining three electrons from aluminum, let's represent them using another color. Now our nitrogen will have a charge of minus three. So this is the Lewis structure for aluminum nitride. This can be written as Al3 plus N1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Three minus. This can be written as this. So this is the Lewis structure for aluminum nitride. The last example is aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide. First, let's try to write the formula. We have aluminum and we have oxygen. What's the charge on the ion of aluminum? It's three plus. The charge on the ion of oxygen it's two minus. Crisscrossing this will give us Al two O three. What does this mean? One formula unit of aluminum oxide will have two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen. Three atoms of oxygen. So one aluminum, second aluminum, 
oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Okay. So our aluminum has already lost their three electrons. So they're not going to have any electron in their last shell. So this would be three plus. Three plus. So what does this mean? Aluminum atoms has lost three electrons each, totally six electrons. These electrons will be. Uh, these electrons will be gained by by three oxygen atoms, two electrons each, okay? So what does this mean? Originally, our oxygens had six electrons each. Originally, they had uh, six electrons each, like this. But after the reaction, but after uh, they have gained two electrons each from aluminum. Let's try to represent it in a green marker here. So what does this show? Two aluminum atoms has lost three electrons each, totally six electrons. Uh, These six electrons will be gained by three oxygen atoms, okay? They will gain them two electrons each. So this will leave us with two minus charges for the three oxygen Ions. So this is basically the Lewis structure for aluminum oxide, which can be written as 2Al3+, and 3O1234567, 2 minus. This shows that we have two aluminum atoms losing three electrons each, and three oxygen atoms gaining two electrons each. So this is the Lewis structure for aluminum oxide. So this is uh, how you can do the loose structure for ionic compounds. Uh, if you have any questions regarding writing loose structures, or if you are struggling with a specific ionic compound to write this loose structure, don't forget or don't hesitate to uh, comment them um, on the comment section. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.